Next to enter the den are Israeli entrepreneurs Yossi Romano and Ziv Lanewand, who are hoping their invention can clean up the environment so they can clean up in business. I think we uh, have a real chance of changing the market and changing people's lives. Huh? We are hoping to catch two dragons. Peter Jones on the tech side and Tukur Suleiman on the product side are a good combination. Hello dragons, my name is Ziv. My name is Yossi Romano and we are here to present Breezy. Breezy revolutionized protection from outdoor air pollution starting with the most vulnerable one, babies and young children. Half of the children in the UK live in areas where pollution exceeds the safe recommended levels. And millions of children worldwide develop respiratory disease and allergies due to exposure to poor air quality. The way that it works, it sucks ambient air from one side, cleans it, and blows the clean air to the baby breathing area. Breezy was tested in Surrey University by the Clean Air Research Center, the test showed that Breezy can clean the air by up to 80%. We are seeking an investment of £100,000 in return for 5% of the company. Um, you want, do you want to see the product? Yeah. A confident pitch from business partners Yossi and Ziv, who are looking for £100,000 for just 5% of their air purification product for prams and strollers. So it fits any pram, stroller or car seat. Tej Lalvani is first to get to grips with the idea behind this air filtering gizmo. So it's an interesting product. There is this whole scare about pollution, especially in metropolitan cities. So how does it actually work? So it uh, takes ambient air from one side, the polluted air, yeah. pass it through process of filtration and then blows it from the other side, preventing bad air from reaching the baby breathing area. It's creating an air shield. Th that filter which has got the, the grime on it, is that just average use in a day or is it...? Uh, so that's 30 hours of uh, usage, okay. yeah. So all of this was supposed to go into the baby's lungs. Oh. And have you spoken to any retailers about this? In the strollers business, there are probably three players that kind of share the market amongst themselves. So we're talking with one of them. Steve, who's the, part, who's the company you're talking to? I apologize, I cannot disclose the name at this stage because it's uh, confidential. Well, I can't decide whether I want to invest. I have to know who it is. No. You're not going to tell us? I'm not going to share the name right now. Are your hands cold? No, I'm more comfortable like this, if you don't mind. The comfy but cagey entrepreneur remains tight-lipped in the face of favoured dragon Peter Jones's probing. But it appears Deborah Meaden has spotted some potential in the product. What I see here is massive opportunity because there's absolutely no doubt at all if this product solves that problem, bingo. So you're pretty early on on your prototype stages. What else has to be developed? Which bits are not working? We still need to improve the airflow. It's not strong enough. We still did not test the batteries in terms of performance and life. We still need to design the filter so it will look like a commercial product and not like a, you know, like a filter from, from factory. You've listed three things that need completing. Airflow, batteries, filter. Those are the three components that make this work. The product is working, but I don't think, we don't think, it works good enough to be launched as a commercial product. That's the same as not working, by the way. OK. The truth of the matter is that product cannot enter the market, and the three things that are stopping it are the three fundamental parts of the product. That's, that's fact. That's what you've told me. Without those three components, it is nothing. Why is the business worth, in your eyes, two million today? You need to look at the signals that you get, OK? So basically, we have a very strong signal for our technology from the University of Surrey and Professor Prashant Kumar. OK, and what has he done in his history 
that has made millions of pounds for people as a result of his advice? No, he's not. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, he no. doesn't look to monetize his knowledge and his expertise. He's an academic. OK, so what product have you introduced in the market that has made a, a huge return for investors? So uh, I was a part of a startup that uh, was uh, trading content on the web. How much money did people invest in that business? One and a half million dollar. And how much did it sell for? It didn't sell. It ceased to exist. What, it went bust? Yeah, it went bust. OK, great. And so go back to Zeev. What have you got, Zeev, that's delivered huge returns for investors? Well, I have hands-on led a business that today sells around 150 million US dollars in China. And what business is that? Water treatment business. It's your company? But no, I was employed in this company. I headed the marketing. I was VP marketing. Oh, so you worked for a company that was successful. So go back to my question. Yeah. Two million pounds worth of value. Yeah. I don't see that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Is that all you've got to say? Just fair enough? Yeah. Do you not care? Oh, I care a lot. Not, not everybody can see. It's OK. Mm. Wow. What an attitude. Tensions rise as the entrepreneur's laid-back demeanour leaves Peter Jones unusually gobsmacked. And Zeev's unique approach to responding to questions hasn't gone unnoticed by Jenny Campbell. You have quite a strange attitude. I mean, you've come into the den today wanting right. investment and wanting a dragon. Right. But it almost feels like you're not really bothered whether that happens or not. I am extremely interested in receiving an investment from a dragon that is interested in the business and can see the potential of the business. Not okay. everybody sees it. But then if okay. a dragon starts questioning to un get that understanding, do you take that negatively? Absolutely well, not. And just reinforce for me what a dragon will bring to this party. I think if we're talking about uh, Mr. Tooker here, he Oh, you, you really came experience. for Mr. Tooker, is that what you're saying? No, no, I came well, for all like. of you, definitely, and okay. I'll be happy if any of you join us with your vast experience, especially I'm talking about Mr. Tooker, and I'm talking about Peter because of his interest in uh, technology, <laughs> crowdsourcing information from our users. He might be coughing to stop you alienating three dragons sitting yeah. in the middle, because if I were you, I'd keep your five options open. You see, you, you seem a really nice guy. Um, Thank you. But see, there, you, you, there, there's something about you that's just, just horrible. Your attitude and your demeanour is just really off-putting. You're asking me to invest in a company that you're valuing at £2 million, and you're not even willing to share who you're talking to. It's just bizarre. And you haven't even got a product that's working yet, and yet you still, with your hands in your pockets, your demeanour and character is, is, is about as far away as being attractive to invest in. And yet, Zeev, there's something that I really do like about you. When we've got into the detail, I feel that you've been really, really honest, even to the point where you could push away an investment with your candidness. So that is really genuinely refreshing. And that's why I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 30%. Thank you for your offer. <clears throat> In one of the biggest U-turns ever seen in the den, Peter Jones lays into the entrepreneur and then lays down an offer. Can Deborah Mead and see past the design flaws to a product that has a place in the market? This is a really one of those high stakes but high gain businesses because you have got magic dust if this hits the spot. So I, too, am going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all of the money 
for 30%. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like the product, I like what you're doing, and I can add a lot of value there in terms of manufacturing, marketing, and distributing. So, with that in mind, I'm going to give you an offer. I'll offer you the £100,000 for 30% of your business. Tej Lalvani becomes the third dragon to tender a deal. Mr. Tuka's baby connections meant he was in the duo's sights before they entered. But is he sold on their solution for pollution? This is a sector that I'm in, and it's interesting, but I also know what's involved. I think I can help you bring this to a point that it's ready for market. First of all, with the manufacturing. Second of all, we've got distribution worldwide. So, I'm going to make you an offer. I'll give you all of the money, but I want 30%. Tuka Suleiman straps himself into the buggy product and makes a play for the business. You want to go back in the wall, so, I think? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> After a rocky start, the two entrepreneurs have witnessed a remarkable turnaround by the Dragons and clocked up four identical offers. But at 30%, Peter Jones, Deborah Meaden, Tej Lalvani and Tuka Suleiman are all asking for six times the amount of equity than the 5% the pair are willing to give away. <laughs> Okay. First of all, thank you very much for your proposals, which are which are great. Uh, really, honestly, beyond my expectations, being this horrible guy. Um, and I didn't say horrible, did I? Yes, you well, did you actually did. say horrible. Yeah. Oh, I take it back. You seem really <laughs> you nice. Took, you took it a bit to the extreme. Anyway, actually, these proposals are just not realistic. Um, we can take one hundred thousand in return for twelve percent of the company. We're so far away, right. you know, we're at 30 percent and then you're saying 15, so that's quite a huge gap. Are you willing to move a bit more? No, I just moved from 12 to 15. I didn't know whether you noticed <laughs> yeah, that. Sorry, I did. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> well, guys, look, I mean, there needs to be uh, a reward risk, and I think 30 percent is fair for 100,000 pounds at this stage. So on that basis, I'm out. That is a long way from, from being finished. And I think where you're proposing, it's just too far away. So I won't be investing. I'm out. I'm, I'm slightly apologetic that I did call you horrible, but I'm not willing to drop down to 15%. So on that basis, I'm also out. Three dragons depart in quick succession. Only Tuka Suleiman remains. He has a track record in investing in baby businesses. Will he compromise to catch a deal? I know what I can offer. I think you know what I can offer. Yeah. I've taken a baby product. Within a year, my partner, who was the creator, was offered five million pounds for a stake. So I know what I can bring to the party. I also know that I have the team to make this work. So the risk will be much smaller for you than to anyone else? I know, I know. But I'm willing to reduce my stake to 25% and give you 125,000. So just to clarify, Tuki, you're offering more than 100,000, 125,000 for 25%. Correct. For 25. We're getting much closer, I think. And if you can do a last small effort and invest 150,000 in return for 20%, then I think we can have a deal. This is my final offer. 
I will give you 125,000 pounds for 25%. When I receive my money back, I will reduce my stake to 20%. We believe in you as much as we believe in the product. We accept. Good. Hey. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. We, 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 Thank you. We'll make Thank this work. Much. I promise. We'll make this it. work. Tuka Suleiman negotiates hard and wins a deal. He's like your long lost brother. Right. right. What do you think? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And the entrepreneurs walk away with £125,000 in their company coffers. <laughs> Okay. I've never seen you work so hard for a deal, Tuka. Well done. Tuka wanted it more than anyone else, and he was willing to do an extra step, an extra push to close the deal. I was wow. just excited to shake his hand because it came out of his pocket for the first time. <laughs>